Hey everyone, it's Andrzej on Software and today's podcast episode is about command sourcing. So if you've been following me over the last years, you know that I'm very interested in event sourcing recently. So command sourcing sounds very similar and there are similarities, but on the other hand, it's something completely different. And I've been involved in one current approach in one of our projects where we try to introduce common sourcing. And there are so many mm, different aspects of it. That I thought I would, I will try to gradually get you familiar with what is, what it's about, why we go there uh, and what kind of problems we're trying to solve. So today I'll try to stay simple and maybe in the next episodes or next blog post, I will try to go get more deep. So the idea of command sourcing, uh, is about persisting comments. So a comment is a user's intent to change the system or other system's intent to change our system state. And we persisted. Uh, so we have some kind of command store. In our case, we just reuse event store and just kind of fake it. Uh, that is uh, another message type that we store. And when we persist the comment, then we are able to replay our system uh, through comments, the whole state of the system. And here is one difference uh, as compared to event sourcing, at least in as compared to our approach to common sourcing and event sourcing, is that the difference here is that with event sourcing, you never replay the whole system from events. You never source the whole system from events. You only do it uh, per um, one read model or usually per uh, aggregate or per process manager, or you have a projection uh, and you load some state into memory. Usually it's a small state and it's fast uh, and there are like no performance penalties overall uh, because it's, it's usually a short uh, stream of events. So we, with command sourcing, at least the way we approach it is it's different. Uh, we do assume that it will be a performance hit. So command sourcing, uh, it's not something that we will do very often, at least not in the first uh, phases. It's something that we consider to do from time to time with our system, where even if it takes like one hour or two hours, we can do it because we can do it uh, under the hood and then we can just replace the system state and we will re replay the whole system. So we replay all the users request our system. Obviously not all projects sound like a good fit for that. In our case, we think it's a good fit uh, because we do kind of like batch processing, batch calculation. And this is also why we, because the specifics of the project is that uh, we do quite complicated calculations and there are so many edge cases of the calculations that we sometimes might be wrong. And the idea of common sourcing is to have this kind of second weapon to for those situations where we noticed that we did our calculations wrong and we want to replay the system from uh, all the commands and get the new state that is different from the current state because hopefully it, cor it, it contains the fixes to the calculations. In a way, we can imagine that we can rebuild a system from one year of commands and get a new kind of state. Obviously it has big implications and I'm going to, I'm going to cover them in other episodes. For example, if any kind of, if any part of our system is leaking to other systems, then it's a, uh, it's not so easy. Also when we replay the commands, it's not really the, the same system that we are replaying because we will uh, inject or we will connect different dependencies. So usually when we have some kind of uh, communication with another system, we do it through a, uh, an adapter object. So during replaying, we don't want to con contact the other system as well. So uh, we will uh, use, during the re replaying phase, we will use an in-memory adapter which doesn't really contact the real third system. But just again, to be very specific, it, it's about our project which doesn't really contact third parties that much. And if it will do, it will be very sporadic and very under control, I would say. Uh, so this is not a big issue for us. Uh, another problem that common sourcing kind of solves as a side effect 
it's not really probably the main reason is that if you already do event sourcing then you probably know it's cool and awesome but there is one uh, challenging thing about event sourcing and this thing is called event versioning so over the time of development when you want to have one event but then you realize that this event should actually have different properties new properties then sooner or later you end up with the idea of uh, an event version so you'll have two different events they differ with the version they kind of mean the same but they have different properties and your system needs to know how to deal with both of them because they live in the history already and uh, you never reject the history so uh, in here uh, you will end up with two different events. Obviously, there are patterns for that, so it's not like the end of the world. You can convert those events into new versions of the events during loading or some other uh, techniques. There is a fantastic book by Greg Young called Event Versioning, I think. it's a, I think it's, it's free when you read it online, uh, so you can easily Google it. Mm. And with when you end up with those different versions of events, uh, and you have command sourcing. You can always rebuild the commands. Uh, you, you can you can always rebuild from the commands, and then you only have the events the, the, as a result f uh, in the in their newest version. So this is a nice side effect, but it can actually have a significant impact on development time and development uh, easiness. So that's uh, that's one reason that we want to do it. Uh, there are more, I'll cover them later. For now, I hope I, I at least try to explain to you uh, what is common sourcing about. So thanks for listening and see you and hear you in the next episode.